the genuine article. Discussion and commentary based on articles from Jack. Hello, I'm Tony DeMaria, the editor of Jack, here with another issue of Inside Jack. And one of the newly discovered uh, syndromes in cardiology that's attracted a lot of attention is called apical ballooning syndrome, uh, often commonly called Takasubo syndrome, and most recently called stress cardiomyopathy. The implication there, of course, being that stress plays an important role in this disorder. And we've got a paper in press that's really fascinating uh, that addresses this very issue. The senior author is with us, Dr. Amir Lerman, and uh, Amir is professor of medicine and associate chair of academic affairs at the Mayo Clinic. So Amir, tell us uh, about your study and how you went about uh, sorting through the potential mechanisms of Takasubu. So thank you, Tony, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Um, I, I, the major intriguing part, is, as you indicated, is the role of stress in this uh, particular syndrome. And uh, is the question that we ask is that um, a coincidence, or this is an inherent uh, a, a characteristic of this patient that present with stress-induced cardiomyopathy. So we uh, set an experiment by which we uh, look at this patient that had an episode of apical ballooning and uh, um, to check their response, vascular as well as endothelial response to um, mental stress. Very clever approach. Go ahead, Amir. So we uh, call these women that have this episode and compare them to uh, postmenopausal women as well as uh, women that have uh, ST elevation myocardial infarction and uh, set an experiment by which these, they're exposed to mental stress and we follow their vascular reactivity as well as the acute effect of uh, mental stress on the vascular response. So as I recall, you compared a, a group of women with apical ballooning syndrome to women who uh, were a comparable age in postmenopause without the syndrome and a small group of comparable women who had previously had an acute myocardial infarction. That's correct. And uh, uh, the result shows that uh, in particularly the women that have a, a apical ballooning syndrome have abnormal response to mental stress, uh, which was characterized by initial uh, vas decrease in vascular response to mental stress as well, as well as uh, decreasing their peripheral endothelial function in response to the mental stress as opposed to the other groups. So this supports uh, the concept that stress really uh, may be the etiology in, in, in this syndrome. It supports two concepts, as you said. One of them that stress may be one of the mechanisms which mediate to vascular activity that mediate this syndrome because, uh, as we know, they have normal coronary artery. They don't have any significant obstruction. And second concept that is growing and addressed in your journal is the effect of personalized medicine and the fact that each person may be, have a differential and individual response to environmental risk factors. So is, is there any therapeutic implication here in your finding? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, in this uh, study, we did not address any therapeutic, but I think it has an implication of therapeutic uh, since uh, first initially, uh, you can use this methodology maybe to screen this patient and to see if they are more uh, sensitive or responders to mental stress. And if this is the case, then you can design pharmacological and non-pharmacological therapy to um, um, somehow in, in change the response to mental stress uh, to where you want it to be. Well, these are uh, fascinating results, and uh, in terms of what has been a fairly confusing syndrome in terms of etiology, I think they provide some uh, tangible evidence uh, that stress uh, may, in fact, really play an important role. Um, we thank you very much for being with us. For Inside Jack, I'm Tony DeMaria.